Okay, so we've cut all of our lengths for the frame and we are upstairs in the printmaking studio. We grabbed two corner clamps from the painting studio. Uh, somebody stole four of these, so do not make sure that you return these when you're done if you do borrow them. They're in the wood shop area. We need as many as we can get. If we can have four, then we're gonna use four. I have one that I have in my studio. These are from the painting studio. These are the best types for you to get. Those cheap corner clamps that you get for like $7 to $10 are just not worth it, they suck. And these ones are much better. They'll last you forever and they won't break. Those ones always break. Um, so we have three of these. For the screws that we're using, there's a, diff a bunch of different ways to do it. I just end up using a, a square bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's a square bit and it's two and a quarter inch length, so it's a little bit long. We don't need them to be this long. One and three quarters is good as well. But you can see they're going to go into the wood like this. And we're going to put them in the top and bottom of the frame. So make sure that you, you have that understanding while you're doing this. So that they're hidden. If they're at the top and bottom of the frame, uh, viewers won't see them. I also want a, a drill bit, just any wood drill bit is fine, but we need it to be thinner than whatever screw we're using. So hold your drill bit up to your screw and make sure you can still see the thread. You can see that, right? Ideally, this would be a little bit bigger. We, want, we need to pre-drill so that we don't split the wood when we put the screw in. These are very shallow fluted head, so they don't cause a lot of um, wood splitting as well and we're gonna inset these a little bit so that's why I brought this up um, sometimes I do that sometimes I don't but we're gonna we're gonna use this today and then we need some wood glue and a hand handheld drill okay so we're gonna get set up here I guess that's good so we're gonna start with three pieces Or actually, we just need two pieces to start with. So, because of how many we have. So, you want to line that up? And then this one is going to line up here. So, you have to go back. We want it on the table, though. This table's yeah. great for doing this. So, there you go. Right there. You have to yep, you have to loosen that. That's why this table is good because the handles, almost all the dimensions are like perfect for this kind of stuff. So you're gonna want this side up at the same elevation. Okay. So that's why it's nice to have at least three. Gotcha. Because you need three to do two at a time. So we're gonna loosen this. So that's all you need to do with that side. Gotcha. So here, oh, yeah, that works much better. Yeah, so that's why we need three to be able to get our elevations correct. Ideally, you want four, and you want to be able to put all the pieces together and check and make sure that they're, they fit snug together. Because sometimes um, those table saws and, and chop saws, especially a cheap one, it's it's going to give you the wrong angle. It's not going to be a perfect 45 degree angle. Sometimes okay. you need to make adjustments. Looks good. You want you just want that to be as seamless as possible. I tighten that. Yep. So what I'll do, I just line it up and then tighten this up. And I just want to check for gaps. Sometimes if there's glue in there, it'll leave little gaps. Oh, glue in the clamp. Yeah. But I think that's okay. So, get it tight. It's not quite lined up. Yeah, it, they might not always be. The outside we can shave down if okay. we need to. It's more important like on the inside, I think. Gotcha. That's pretty good. 
it'll all tighten up once we put the screw in too. So that's good for now. So I'm just gonna take this one piece out. Add some glue. And this is a weird glue. It's missing its nozzle. So you want just a little bit of glue. Actually, wet rag. Wet rag. Well, no, paper towel. Because I don't know if there's ink on those. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll just pop it right back in. So if the, I had four pieces together, you know, I would glue the other end as well. Good. You want it nice and snug. Um, and then we're going to pre-drill. So, okay. So this is the, this is what would be the bottom or the top, right? Because it's a vertical piece. So we're going to Put two holes. So I'm going to take put that in reverse, grip that, and then twist. Take this piece out. And I'm going to put in a smaller. Now I wish this was a little bit longer. because the, um, the nails are longer, the mm. screws are longer. So I wanna make sure that I'm going straight in and I'm not coming out the side. You know, that's the, the worst thing to happen is for it to go out the side. So I do two screws because if I don't do two, these can pivot at the joint. So you need two to keep them steady. Getting them in this piece is the hardest part, but this one is gonna be no problem. Got lots of I'm not worried about that one. This one is going to be the one where it's a little bit harder. There we go. Now I'm going to switch to this. And I'm just going to insert for the head, you know. Go a little bit deeper. See if we can get a little bit. See what I'm doing, Charlie? Yep. I'm making room so that we can have some of the glue go in there. I don't, it's so, it's such a small area though that it's tough to like, I don't know. We might have to play with that because okay. it's it's so close to the edge here because yeah. this is so skinny that it might be better if we just do this and like paint it okay. with a little bit of acrylic. We'll see. And then I'm switching to my square drill bit. I'm gonna do. This one first. And I don't want to go too far in. I usually just want it to be really flush. And this one I want to be careful with. What's worse, for it to go in or for it to go out? For it to go out. Mm. If it goes in, I can work with it still, gotcha. and it's hidden. Yeah, I think we're gonna leave it like that. Okay. So those are a little bit long too, you know. So, but that's good. So we're done with this one, and so 
we're going to take this clamp off now. And I'm going to come over here to, if you want to put that one on that, I guess I probably could have just take that one. Okay, so we're, we're going to do that with all four sides. So I'll turn this off. So we're almost done too for, for now, but you just want to be careful putting these in. Charlie and I talked about it. And you know, it's better to, if it's hard to get the, the screw straight and it takes a few years of getting used to it. But if you're going to make a mistake, you want to make a mistake inward because if it pops out, then you ba you should really replace the, the piece. And that's why it's always good to have a few extra scrap pieces in case something like that does happen. Oh, see, and it did go in a little bit, but that's okay. Um, it's, uh, if we need to, we can back that out and I can get a shorter screw too. You have short screws? Um, I probably do. I have a bunch of like miscellaneous ones. Uh -huh. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so we're almost done with this. We'll take this out and just get a look at it. That's good. This screw needs going a tiny bit more. Okay. I was so afraid it was going to pop out after you said that. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't done that in a long time. So usually I overcompensate to go inward. And then you're gonna wanna just inspect it, check the front. You know, we want this to be flush. It's a little bit not quite flush there. So we're we gonna sand it? Yeah, we can just sand that down. And we'll take a wet rag and we wanna wipe down all the sawdust, get all the, all the extra glue off. We'll sand down these little bits right here. And we do have a sander in here. Okay. So we'll just touch up that, touch up the corners and That's just glue too. And just give it a test, it looks good. Okay. We did a, a pretty good job. You know, it's not perfect, but I mean, it's, it'll do in a jiffy. That's, yeah. And it's, it looks pretty darn good when, when it's all done, so. Um, one other thing that I didn't mention was that Charlie is not staining uh, his wood. So this is basswood and you wanna go with a natural look. Uh, if I wanted to, I always stain mine, and so I go with a black ivory stain. Um, the stain itself, I will take a foam brush, and uh, I'll have all my pieces out that are just still in lengths, not assembled, and I'll just put one layer on one piece, front and back, and then take a rag and wipe it off. It's called pickling with the stain. And it gives you just, a, it's not a thick black. You can still see a lot of the grain and it's quick because it dries quickly. I wipe off, I put it on pretty thick and then wipe it right off. And that, that works pretty well for me. Um, the, let's see, you can pickle with other things. I've pickled with asphaltum um, spray paint. You can pickle with, that, with spray paint. Um, when you do that, you want to make sure that your rags go in a fire safe uh, bin because the linseed oil in them can break down and cause a spontaneous combustion fire. So you don't want to just throw all your rags in a garbage. You want to make sure that they're completely dry and that they're not, they don't stay saturated. So you put them in a comb non-combustible bin. Is that that like the red bin in uh, litho? Yep. Okay and just let them dry out naturally like that. You don't want, especially if sunlight, right? If I have a big thing of those rags so, like soaked in linseed oil, it, I've, I've, I had a friend who, whose uh, house did burn down and mm. he actually lost his life doing that. So you wanna be careful. Um, that's it, so we're gonna come back and we're gonna apply a varnish and then we're gonna cut down our plexi and we're gonna cut our mats but you can see why we do this first before we cut any of the mats because now when we measure the interior it's not going to be exactly what we had before because you know there is little bits of difference between the two but that's it
Okay. Turn it off. Yep. Okay, so we are back in the studio and we have uh, Charlie's frame all pieced together. And we are now going to start thinking about the plexiglass and the mat board. So we're going to cut the plexi first just so we can make sure that we have a nice, uh, nice size for this because when you make your own frames, a lot of times there's little bows in the lumber and it's not perfectly straight. And so, and when we cut it, sometimes the lengths are slightly different from each other. So we never want to have the plexiglass cut at the store. We always want to cut it afterwards and cut it to the size that we cut the, the frame because there's minor adjustments that happen when you when you do that so like even if it's off by two sixteenths then you might have to you know spend money on a new piece of plexiglass so we're gonna cut so just be careful when you measure and what you want to do is measure the inside of your frame and so you don't want it to be exactly like so this one if i measure from edge to inside edge is almost exactly 30 inches. Now, if I cut my plexiglass to 30 inches, it's gonna be tight and it's not gonna fit in there well. And then I'm gonna have to scrape off and sand down the edges of the plexi and it's not fun to, to sand plastic or acrylic. So we wanna make sure that we have enough room for the plexiglass, I'm not sure if you can see that, to kinda move around inside the frame but we don't want it so tight that it's pushing on the edges. Um, we also want to make sure that it's not so small that it pops out. So sometimes the plexi will pop out or if it's like, you, that would usually happen on a top edge. So when the frame is hanging on the wall, if this is the bottom here, then maybe the plexi will pop out here and start to stick out and it just looks, looks crummy and you know, it's not gonna hold up over time. So we took our measurements and we're gonna cut some plexiglass now. So we can get this out of the way. And you have the plexi. Okay, if you wanna take that out of the... Okay. Um, actually, why don't we do it right over here, where, where that is. Okay, and we need a long piece of something that we can cut. So I usually have some scraps back there. Okay. So first thing we can do is measure. Let's see. Measure. Can we get the dimensions again? Uh, the of this? Yeah. I forget how much it was. Maybe it's in the seat. Yeah, I didn't write it down. I wrote down our measurements for the frame. That's Is the, that what you wanted? Yep, that's oh. the, uh, the, the inter cut that we just did. I thought you meant how big this is right now. Okay. Nah. Uh, 29 and 3 quarters and 25. Okay. 29. And you had a plus on that one. 29 and 3 quarters plus? Yep. And, and then 25 minus. Okay. So let's see what we can get out of this piece. So we can get the long piece out of this widthwise. Okay. So okay, I'm gonna do this over here. So 29 and three quarters. <laughs> no, it's, pro it's probably just in the in the plastic. plastic. So I want to be really careful with this. And should we draw on the plastic side? I don't know if I better. No, we're actually not gonna draw. We're gonna we're gonna oh. cut. Oh, that's what that is. Yep. So 29 and 3 quarters plus. Is that right? Yep. Yep. So I'm just going to take my little tool here and make a little scratch. And then 25 inches yep. this way. And then I'm gonna go to this side. Again. Cut. 
and then So this Plexi is just a standard acrylic. You can get um, different grades of Plexi that has um, haze reduction. Oh, I think that uh, that has something like doesn't yellow. Oh, that's good. Um, so it, you know, it's depending on what you want to pay for. You can get double thick also. You can get the anti-glare stuff, it's really nice. This one was like 30 bucks at Lowe's and it has some stuff like non-yellowing. I think it might have UV protection, it said, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So you want to use a tear bar or a cork-backed ruler so it doesn't slide around. This is just heavy so it doesn't slide too much. And you want to find your grooves. And this is the chunk that is important to us right now. This is our off cut. So anytime I, I'm protecting the important part with the ruler. So if I slip with this, I'm going to slip this way. And so it's, so it's, it's nice to have that, you know, this ruler is protecting the rest of that. And I have a backer just so when I cut off the edge, I don't damage whatever table I'm on. I'm trying to find a mark here. That must be it. And because this is so important that it fits in there just right, I really want to make sure that I'm doing this right. And I'm just going to do it a light score. And then notice I pick up my hand and I move it. And then I move it again. I don't want to hold here and do the whole length because I could easily push the ruler or the straight edge in a direction that I don't want to. I just want to stop, stop, and that way I can keep a consistent line. I like to do this about three to four times with moderate pressure. So that's three, and we'll do one more just for so get a nice clean cut. Gonna flip this over. And find that line again. This time I'm just eyeballing. How exact do you have to be for this next part? Um for the backside score. I mean, about the same. It's it's easier though because you can see it. Ah. It'll break pretty consistently. You don't even necessarily have to do a backside score, uh -huh. but sometimes if I don't, then I have to break off some small pieces. Uh -huh. Okay, and that's it. So we're gonna. Flip it over because I scored the front a little bit more than the other side. And then I want to find the edge of my table and just line it up right about there. And then if it's a big piece, yeah, um, you might want to just have two people do this, but it's okay with me. Ooh! One. That was scary. Oh, there you go. Now you got some extra. For another piece. Yeah, that's definitely big enough for another piece. So now we gotta test it and see if it fits. Well, we didn't cut, we only cut one side. Oh, yeah. Good thing. Okay. So, what do we got here? Which is the other side? There's my mark. So, 29 and three quarters. I 
Yeah, so you can see why it would be important to just do it yourself. Yeah. Because if you have somebody cut it for you too, even if you do know exactly what you need, you know, it's just... You You're trusting to... someone else with a really important part. Yeah. If it's off by even like a millimeter, it could mean the difference between it working and not working. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a utility knife. But you do have to kind of use a little bit more pressure. So that's specifically for this? This is, yeah. And you can get this little thing at a hardware store for oh. like three or four bucks. Not ideal. No, uh, probably not because you know I, I'm covered in dust. Yeah, me too. I can see it all over the place. But we're not actually putting it together today. We're not, so that's a good thing. But before you do, you'll want to take wipe everything down again. Okay. Does it work? Perfect. Oh my god, that was scary. Look at that. Perfect total. You can see the bow. Yeah. Let's switch around. It's a, if anything, it's a little tight that way, so we can just try orienting. It doesn't just matter which one's ways. front to front? No, as long as it's nice and... Like, that was a little bit too snug, but this is good. This is perfect. What happens if it's too snug? Could it break? No, but it might buckle. Ah. So if it puts, if there's too much pressure, then you'll see a little buckle in it. That's great, that's perfect. Yay! So, I'm gonna use the plexiglass as a template to cut the mat. Okay. Not that we have to, but we might as well. Since that is pretty much right on, you know, then we can use that as our template. Uh, Charlie is going to, we're gonna skip this part of the video but at this point, um, Charlie would want to make sure that the frame is sealed with acrylic finish. And you're gonna want something like this. Um, to make this archival, you have to uh, varnish or seal your frame because the wood has tannins and acids in it. They will leach into your prints or drawings or whatever over time and uh, cause some some bad things to happen. So we use, and you wanna use a water-based acrylic finish. And they come with, there's a bunch of different brands that make them, but you just wanna make sure that's water-based because oil-based will do the same thing. And if I was making this, I would have um, pickled all of these, let them sit overnight. Then I would uh, assemble all of my frames and then I would um, put this on it afterwards. If I have, if I'm using black and I have little dings where there's a little bit of white sticking out or where I cut something and I see a little bit of white, I can just take a Sharpie and touch up my, my um, finish, the, um, the black ebony stain just with a Sharpie and that'll help get rid of any little imperfections. I don't think you explained pickling earlier when the camera was on. Oh, okay. Um, so pickling, if I'm going to stain this, I would take uh, my, my mini wax, uh, ebony stain, and I would just apply one coating on everything. You can do it assembled or you can do it when they're still unassembled. And just apply it with a foam brush or a 
a camel hair brush and then take a rag and wipe it off. So when you pickle it, you just kind of put it on, let it sit for a minute and then wipe it off. So I'll usually like do, I'll, I'll coat like four or five planks and then I'll go back to the beginning and start wiping it off of them. And that just allows for a lot of this nice kind of stuff to go through. It's not a real flat black. It's like more of a, uh, more of like a 70% black as opposed to you know, a real thick layer of a stain. Okay, um, you wanna hit the button on that? Okay, so we have just finished matting Charlie's artwork and um, now we are going to coat it with our protective acrylic water-based finish. Uh, again, this is water-based, make sure it's water-based. Um, first thing I do, I usually will make sure that my, I usually like to seal my frames after they've been assembled. So um, we're ready to go. We wiped this down with a wet cloth, got rid of all the extra sawdust that was accumulated and what we'll do first, I'm trying to think what would be the best way to do this. We usually do two coats. So probably the front, do the front. No, we'll do the back first. Yeah, we'll do the back first. So we're gonna start with the back and Charlie, you've got a stir stick. All right, let's give it a stir. That good? Yeah, that's fine. So just make sure that you have um, something to stir that with. And I like to just take two like thin pieces of scrap pieces. Uh, I've always got some floating around, but you want them wider. You just want this elevated off of your table surface for while you're, uh, you're doing this. So foam brushes, let's see what we got here. Uh, that one seems probably better. Yeah, we could probably use the smaller one. And it's important to get into all these grooves in here. So the way I'll usually do it is kind of focus on one part at a time. It's a little harder to see how thick it is. So be a little bit generous. This first coat is going to take a little bit more. How long does it take to dry? Uh, it's fast drying. I think you could probably do your second coat after an hour. Okay. I think this is fast drying. Yeah, it's ultra fast drying. So that's good. Make sure you get all the little nooks. It's hard to see on this on on this uh, wood. It's so white. Yeah. So I usually start with like this gap this crack in here, the rabbit cut. And I'll just do these two sides and then I'll let you do the others. So start with this. Don't worry about drips or anything right now. All the way up. Make sure you're pretty generous with, that, with it. You don't wanna really miss any. And then I'll do the top here. Kind of going around and then I might start doing some on the sides so over here yeah I could do the side here you are gonna get drips and you're gonna want to go back and check it periodically what do you mean check it you want to check because it will pool in certain areas oh, like while it's drying every like 20 minutes before we'll check on it. Um, more like after you're done with the whole thing, okay. just check it and then a couple minutes after that, just keep checking it until you're satisfied that nothing else is gonna pool anywhere. So it's more like, you know, let it drip a little bit, but then don't wait too long because it'll start to dry. Gotcha. Um, so I'm gonna do the interior here, um, right in here. So do I 
do everything like this, wait for it to dry, put the second coat on, wait for it to dry, and then do the front the same way? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I want to, I don't want to do too much on the inside and here in these areas because I don't want it to beat up on the front, right? The front yeah. is the most important thing. And so that, so I don't do a ton on the side either. You kind of like do a little bit thinner coat on the sides, on the inside and on the outside. And then you want to do this in there? Yeah. Let me go around to the other side so I can see it. Yeah, this is hard to see. Yeah. It shows up easier when you have stained wood or anything like that, but. Kind of wondering what it would have been like if I stained it. That ship has sailed. Uh huh. I think the only way to color this frame now would be if you like hodgepodged it or <laughs> modgepodged it, like some paper on it or something. Yeah. I mean, I like it. It'll, It'll be nice, fine. But... It'll be fine. It's just one of those what if. Well, I mean, this process is all kind of learning. Well, no, but it's we're dealing with really um, natural things like stones. Yeah. wood and you know that primal emotion and the print kind of yeah. matches the type of imagery do you think it's going to look in okay? the materials yeah i think it'll be fine okay so that's it i'm gonna so after we're done you know go all the way around and just check for drips underneath go around check make sure there's no drips and then uh wait a little bit maybe 15 20 minutes come back and check it if it's dry enough, you can flip it over and do the front and the sides again. Okay. And uh, the most important thing is that you don't want it to dry face down. Okay. You want it to dry face up so that sometimes you can see that it's pooling right here. Yeah. You don't want that to kind of make something permanent on the front. Gotcha. So you always want that to be the last thing that you do. If it does pull and it dries, could I sand it down? Yeah, you can sand it and redo it in that section. Okay. So it's not a big deal, but it will be kind of milky. So, all right.